number 169 at the Lamb's High Priest, number 169. Of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good afternoon, my friends. Yes. Welcome to all of you and those who are watching from your home. We certainly welcome you to our celebration. Indeed, the church celebrates the precious, most profound gift, the fruit of Easter. His mercy. What a gift given to us and continues to be poured upon us. Let us celebrate with awe and with joy His gift of mercy. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My sisters and my brothers, how blessed we are to be here in the midst of the heart of a God who profoundly loves us and hearts who love him too. We take a moment to acknowledge our sinfulness, to bathe in his mercy as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Great. 
God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what thought they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been redeemed, and by whose blood has saved them. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the Apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate at the meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying flavor, favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ, 
from the dead to an inheritance and that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor, and the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you believe in him. You rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your soul. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to them, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord, and my Jesus said to him, If you come to believe because you have seen me, blessed are those who believe, who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God of God, and that through 
this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Today, and especially tomorrow, we will be celebrating Divine Mercy Sunday, which is the eighth day of the Feast of Easter, in which St. John Paul II said that this is the day that we receive the Easter gift. An amazing day that eight days, eight separate days, and yet make up one day. I mean, it's a good thing that the church allowed Easter to be eight days, because we Catholics are slow to understand that truth. We need eight days, and even more than that, we continue to celebrate Easter in the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh Sunday of, of Easter. God, do we need that day? There must be something very special about Easter and this great gift that God wants to give us this day. And what is that very special Easter gift, my friends? It is the special gift of the total forgiveness of all sins and punishment that the Catholic Church offers in the form of what is called a plenary indulgence today, tomorrow. Matter of fact, if you've been to confession for the last three days, or the last 20 days, and then the next 20 days, in these 40 days, and you receive communion, and you say a special prayer for our Holy Father, then we receive that plenary indul indulgence until we can sit, commit another major sin. But isn't it amazing? If you die with this plenary indulgence, you go straight to heaven. That's exciting, eh, Calary? It's exciting, isn't it? It sure is. But why today, my friends? What sets this day apart from any other day? Today is the octave, the eighth day of Easter. It's the last day of the world's greatest feast, which is indeed Easter. And shouldn't the world's greatest feast offer the world's greatest gift, that amazing total forgiveness of all sins and punishment, or in other words, it's a straight ticket to heaven. Yep. If we should die today, or until we commit the next mortal sin, we would die in a state, a perfect state of sanctifying grace because of his mercy. And what is divine mercy? Well, first of all, the word divine means given by God. It means like God. The word mercy means refraining from harming or punishing offenders. So simply put, Divine mercy is God refraining from harming or punishing offenders, sinners. How did this special feast day be established in the Catholic Church? Well, two, uh, 20 years ago, in the great jubilee year, Pope St. John Paul II established, in light of what he was able to embrace from the message of St. Faustina directly from Jesus, on what his mercy continues to be all about. John Paul, in celebrating 20 years ago this feast of divine mercy, he was indeed fulfilling the will of God. And what's the will of God? that he fulfilled the fact that we as a church, we need more now than ever to re 
emphasized the tremendous gift of divine mercy that the Lord longs to pour into a heart that is truly ready for that mercy. So this feast of divine mercy, my friends, is an annual feast a week after Easter. What an amazing gift this is if we do what is commanded by our church on what can happen to us because of what Jesus continues to do. Well, let's take this a little bit further. What is, my friends, the very last instruction that Jesus gave his church before he died? And what is the very first instruction that he gave his church after he came to life again? My friends, the very first instruction before he died, was it not the sacrament of Holy Communion, the Eucharist, at the Last Supper was not the very first instruction after his resurrection from the dead, the institution of the sacrament of confession. My friends, these two sacraments indeed comprise the fount of divine mercy. The two sacraments that are needed to receive total forgiveness of sins and punishment on this feast day. Did not, as we heard in the gospel today, did not Jesus tell the apostles on that, first, on that first night as he said peace and again peace, he wanted to make sure that that word and what it means really was deepened within, which is why Jesus often has to repeat stuff. Not only 2,000 years ago, even today, he continues to repeat. Did he not tell the apostles, though, on that night of Easter Sunday, first Easter, he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Now listen carefully. Here's the second sacrament that he gave us. Receive the Holy Spirit whose sins you forgive are forgiven and whose sins you retain are retained. The sacrament of penance in the rite of reconciliation known as confession. Isn't that amazing, eh? Here's his sacrifice on Good Friday, but look at the sandwich bread before the sacrifice. It's the gift of the Eucharist. And after his resurrection, immediately Jesus begins to speak about the sacrament of penance, confession, reconciliation. To be able to remember these two sacraments. Look at the divine mercy image. Of course, we usually have our five foot one there, but we're using it tomorrow when our communities come together to celebrate the Divine Mercy Sunday in Rockland. Look at the image of divine mercy, my friends. Aren't the sacraments of Holy Communion and Confession displayed? In this image, ah, look at the heart. Look at that which was pierced. John records it in his gospel. He said, and immediately blood and water flowed out. Very much visible in the image of divine mercy. Blood and water. Are those not the two sacraments that becomes before his death and after his resurrection? Are they not those two, the symbols of those two amazing sacraments from the fount of divine mercy, from the fount of his heart? Is not Holy Thursday evening reflected the Eucharist in his heart where blood flows out? Blood is life, giving us life. The Eucharist gives his life to us. Look at the flow of the water. Is not water spilled out within him to cleanse us, to cleanse the heart purely and fully, especially in the sacrament of penance, of confession? For those of you who haven't been in years to confession, you better hear what Jesus has to say here about the importance of this sacrament. 
the blood and water gushed out from Jesus on the cross are the sacraments of the church, Eucharist and confession. How blessed we are to be given these sacraments, to reawaken us whenever we receive it, to, to be the source of our strength, our power, our grace, to be filled with mercy, but to become martyrs of his love, martyrs of his mercy, as we now share this with others. My friends, how blessed we are to see these amazing gifts of his mercy. Look at the image again. Look at his feet. He's walking because one foot is up front in front of the other. He's going someplace for sure. Where is he going? Look at his hands. One hand is indeed the hand of blessing, and the other one is pointed to his heart and what is being poured out for us. Why is he coming to us? He's telling us, trust in me. Do we not pray that in the Divine Mercy chapter? Jesus, I trust in you. And trust grows when we are with him at the cross. Why is he walking? The resurrected, once crucified Christ walks, approaches us, because he wants to offer us his mercy. Don't be afraid to know that he's walking to you. And guess what? He's going to continue walking to you until he gets you with his love and with his mercy. For those of you who haven't been to confession in a long time, pay close attention to the image of divine mercy. What is flowing out of him in that pale blue image? Oh, what is being poured? That indeed is water from his heart to cleanse us in the sacrament of confession. If you say, well, I go straight to the Lord, Please don't ask me, well, is that okay, Father? Because I'm not going to say it's okay. I'm going to say, the Lord works hard to give you this sacrament of confession also. And as the church teaches, it is indeed His mercy that is poured in that sacrament to cleanse your heart. I didn't say that. Jesus did. If you have a problem with confession a la Jesus, please see Him. Don't see me. He's already convinced me. May his love and mercy convince you of this sacrament, my friend. He will come with you. Because again, it's the crucified Christ in that sacrament of confession that hovers over you. And when he sees a heart that is truly sorry for one's sins, he rejoices in opening up his heart again because the church teaches that he's always offering his sacrifice of his blood. But his blood is being offered as for forgiveness of sins in the confession. Because guess who's there waiting? It's not the priest. Oh, he may look like Father Bob once in a while. But it's, 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 it's Christ himself, the high priest, who longs to hear you. Because he knows it's important that our humanity allows us to hear us announcing our words to the Lord. And it's important that our humanity, our ears, our human ears, need to hear that we are forgiven. And is that not given to you in this rich sacrament of penance, of reconciliation? Don't go only for half the heart of Jesus Christ. Not only for the Eucharist, but divine mercy lets us know of this great gift that he's worked so hard to give you at the cross. His sacrifice of his body and blood, soul, and divinity. And so he awaits you in confession and do not be afraid. As he said to many people, do not be afraid, he's telling you now, for those of you who fear that sacrament or who don't believe in that sacrament. He lets you know he 
longs to give you his mercy in the very place that he has designed right after he rose from the dead. His mercy to be given in this amazing sacrament. And so my friends, what an excellent opportunity we have this weekend, not only to receive the Eucharist however we can in the midst of the coronavirus, but we may, may we also receive the sacrament of penance. How many priests have I seen on that amazing list who are making themselves available to bring Jesus Christ to you? His will, the Lord's will. My friend, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. and pride we express our belief in the merciful God who believes in us I believe in one God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God born of the Father before all ages God from God light from light True God from true God, begotten, not made, unsubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us men, for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified on the cross of Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the door and the Lord of life, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We have heard God's precious word and been challenged by it. May we ask him now to listen to our words of need and to respond to them. For the church, that we may spread God's mercy to those battling the coronavirus, the impoverished, the imprisoned, the chronologically ill, and the lonely, and the forgotten, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear God. our prayer. That on this Divine Mercy Sunday, the church will rededicate herself to living and proclaiming Christ's mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, that they may work toward achieving true justice and lasting peace within their countries and with their neighbors, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For victims of persecution and their loved ones, especially for all those who were killed in the Holocaust, that they may be comforted in the arms of a merciful God let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those trapped in domestic violence, especially during the time of this pandemic, that they may receive the help and support they need to find safe in their homes, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here today, that we may be inspired by the example of the early Christians and share what we have with others with exaltation and sincerity of heart, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased in our parish, especially for Sarah Chamberlain, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And 
this pass is being offered for the living intention for Joshua and Harry. For Joshua, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And Lord, we really also lift up to you in this moment all our children, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren, wherever they are right now, Lord, embrace them with your heart that is filled with mercy for them, that they may catch a glimpse of that great gift this day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Yes, Heavenly Father, we believe that you will hear us, for we pray in the precious name of your Son, Jesus, the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, through goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, through goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world by dying. He has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs>
chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church. Spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Fulton, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is you forever and ever. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Ten of you, it's okay to I'll be giving you communion at the end of Mass. I just want to make sure that those who are at home that they make a spiritual communion. And so for those of you at home, I invite you to repeat after me. My Jesus. My Jesus. I believe that you are present. I believe, I believe that you are present. In the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. I love you I love you. above all things. Above all things. And, I desire to receive you and I desire to receive you into my soul. Into my soul. Since I cannot, Since I cannot at, this moment, at this moment receive you sacramentally, receive you sacramentally. Come, at come at least spiritually into my heart. Into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray to Saint Michael. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Just a reminder that tomorrow, on Divine Mercy Sunday, we will be having a parish wide celebrations in your parks. Yes, we invite you to join us in, in the parking lot at St. Bernard's Church in Rockland. We're in Belfast now, but in Rockland, where we will expose the Blessed Sacrament from the window of the rectory, to be able to see it from your car, to the chanting of the Divine Mercy Chaplet and the very special blessing. It will also be live streamed for, for those of you at home. Certainly invite you to spread the word to our parishioners, to your family and friends to join us tomorrow at 3 p.m. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thank you. And parishioners, I'll be coming to you to bring you the most precious body.